Sun right here mm. of the Aztecs. Mm. It was something like a table mentioned in the book of Herodotus in Ethiopia. So, which they all makes a link to. So, at Monte Alban. So, all right. This is what it says. Now, the table of the sun, according to the accounts given of it, may be thus described. Mm -mm. It is a meadow in the skirts of their city, full of the boiled flesh of all manner of beast, which the magistrates are careful to store with meat every night. Mm. And where whoever likes may come and eat during the day. Mm. The people of the land say that the earth itself brings forth the food. Such is the description which is given of this table. When Cambyses had made up his mind that the spies should go, he forewim sent to Elephantine for certain of the Ichthyophagi who were acquainted with the Ethiopian tongue. And while they were being best issued orders to this fleet to sail against Carthage, but the Phoenicians said they would not go, since they were bound to the Carthaginians by solemn oaths, and since besides it would be wicked in them to make war on their own children. Mm -mm. Now, when the Phoenicians refused, the rest of the fleet was unequal to the undertaking, and so it was that the Carthaginians escaped. Mm -hmm and were not enslaved by the Persians. Mm. Cambyses thought it not right to force the war upon the Phoenicians mm. because they had yielded themselves to the Persians mm. and because upon the Phoenicians all his sea service depended. The Cyprians had also joined the Persians of their own accord and took part with them in the expedition against Egypt. Mm. As soon as the Ichthyophagi arrived from Elephantine, Cambyses, having told him them what they were to say, forthwith dispatched them into Ethiopia with these following gifts, a wit, a purple robe, a gold chain for the neck, armlets, an alabaster box of myrrh, and a cask of palm wine. The Ethiopians to whom this embassy was sent are said to be the tallest and handsomest men in the whole world. In their customs, they differ greatly from the rest of mankind, and particularly in the way they choose their kings. For they find out that the man who is the tallest of all the citizens and of strength equal to his height and appoint him to rule over them. Mm. 21. Book 3. The Ichthyophagi, on reaching this people, delivered the gifts of the king of the country and spoke as follows. Cambyses, king of the Persians, anxious to become thy ally and sworn friend, has sent us to hold converse with thee and to bear thee the gifts thou seest, which are the things wherein he himself delights the most. Hereon, the Ethiopian, who knew they came as spies, made answer. The king of the Persians sent you not with these gifts because he much desired to become my sworn friend, nor is the account which ye give of yourselves true. For ye are come to search out my kingdom. Also your king is not a just man. For were he so, he had not coveted a land which is not his own, nor brought slavery on a people who never did him any wrong. Bear him this bow and say the king of the Ethiopians thus advises the king of the Persians when the Persians can pull a bow of this strength thus easily then let him come with an army of superior strength against the long lived Ethiopians till then let him thank the gods that they have not put it into the heart of the sons of the Ethiopians to combate countries which do not belong unto them so Book 322. So speaking, he unstrung the bow 
and gave it into the hands of the messengers. Then taking the purple robe, he asked them what it was and how it had been made. And they answered truly telling him concerning the purple and the art of the dyer, whereat he observed that the men were deceitful and their garments also. Next he took the neck chain and the armlets and asked them about it, asked about them. So the Ichthyophagi explained their use as ornaments. Then the king laughed, ha, 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 mm. and fancying. Mm -mm. They were fatter, said the Ethiopians, had much stronger ones. Thirdly, he inquired about the myrrh. And when, he, when they told him how it was made and rubbed upon the limbs, he said the same as he had said about the robe. Last of all, he came to the wine. And having learnt their way of making it, he drank a draught, which greatly delighted him. Whereupon he asked what the Persian king was wont to eat, and to what age the longest lived of the Persians had been known to attain. They told him that the king ate bread and described the nature of wheat, adding that 80 years was the longest term of a man's life among the Persians. Herod, he remarked, it, it did not surprise him if they fed on dirt, that they died so soon. Indeed, he was sure they never would have lived so long as 80 years, except for the refreshment they got from the drink, meaning the wine, whereon he confessed the Persians surpassed the Ethiopians. The Ethiophagi then in return... In their turn questioned the king concerning the term of life and diet of his people and were told that most of them lived to be a hundred and twenty years old. Mm. While some even went beyond that age and they ate boiled fish, boiled flesh and had for their drink nothing but milk. When the Ethiophagi showed wonder at the number of the years, he led them to a fountain where when they had washed, they found their flesh all glossy and sleek, as if they had bathed in oil, and a scent came from the spring like that of violets, which is flowers. The water was so weak, they said that nothing could float in it, neither wood nor any lighter substance, but all went to the bottom. If the account of this fountain be true, it would be their con constant use of the water from it which makes the, them so long lived. When they quitted the fountain, the king led them to a prison where the prisoners were all of them bound with feathers of gold. Among these Ethiopians, copper is of all metals the most scarce and valuable. After they had seen the prison, they were likewise shown what is called the table of the sun. Okay, we're going to start right there. Mm. 